I want us to turn our Bibles to the book of Joshua, chapter 7. We are still advancing for conquest. That is the main theme that we are running with as a church. And I tell you, it's the, it's the best theme that I have really encountered so far. I can't wait to see what the Lord has in store for me as a person in this year, 2024. So we are going to take our reading from Joshua chapter 7, verse 1, going downwards to verse number 9. If you are there, you can say amen. 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 We have many amens, so let's read. English Standard Version is the version that I will be using this morning. But the people of Israel broke faith in regard to the devoted things. For Achan, the son of Kami, son of Zabdi, son of Zerah, of the tribe of Judah, took some of the devoted things, and the anger of the Lord burned against the people of Israel. Joshua sent men from Jericho to Ai, which is near Beth Aven, east of Bethel, and said to them, Go up and spy out the land. And the men went up and spied out Ai, and they returned to Joshua and said to him, do not make all the people go up, but let, let about two or three thousand men go up and attack I. Do not make the whole people toil up there, for they are few. So about three thousand men went up uh, there from the people, and they fled before the men of I. And the men of I killed about thirty-six of their men and chased them before the gate as far as Sherabim, uh, Shebarim, and struck them at the descent. And the hearts of the people melted and became as water. And jo then Joshua tore his clothes and fell to the earth of his, on his face before the ark of the Lord until the evening, he and the elders of Israel. And they put dust on their heads. And Joshua said, Alas, O Lord God, why have you brought these people over the Jordan at all to give us into the hands of the Amorites to destroy us? Would that we had, we had been content to dwell beyond the Jordan? O oh Lord, what can I say when Israel has turned their backs before their enemies? For the Canaanites and all the inhabitants of the land will hear of it and will surround us and cut off our name from the earth. And what will you do for your great name? Hmm. Father, in Jesus' name, we ask that you may give us the blessing of your word. Through this word, may healing, deliverance, salvation, provision, correction, rebuke, and training come upon us in the name of Jesus. You have exalted your word above all your name. And this morning we pray that your word may be exalted in our lives. As I speak, use me only as a vessel, but allow the Holy Spirit to speak to your people this morning. Open our hearts to learning and understanding of your word this day. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. You may take your seats in the presence of the Lord. So, church this morning... Our sermon topic is Advancing for Conquest, which is our theme for the year 2024. But the sermon title that I have for us this morning is Advancing with the Lord's Strength. Amen? Amen. You can turn to your neighbor and tell them, Advance with the Lord's Strength. Advance with the Lord's strength. Amen. Amen. Uh, Gio, uh, in the last two weeks, uh, took the time to do an exposition of the book of Joshua, uh, chapter 1 from verse number 2 all the way to verse number 9. And I don't intend to go there because that was well presented. If you have not been in church for the past two Sundays, kindly go to our YouTube channel and our Facebook page and find out what it is that was preached in this place because it's so powerful. In fact, it has given us the desire to get deeper and to get to know what the Lord has in store for us. And so our key scripture is from Joshua chapter 1 verse 2, and it says, Moses, my servant is dead. Now therefore, arise, go over this Jordan, you and all these people, to the land which I'm, I am giving to them, the children of Israel. And so God had an agenda to take the... the 
the, sorry, I wanted to say the women choir have sung a song that aligns themselves with the scripture, but God had an agenda to take the people of Israel from the land of slavery in Egypt and take them to the land that was flowing with milk and honey, the land of promise that God had given uh, a promise to Abraham. And so at this particular time, the people of God had already left Egypt. And I really don't want to get to the depths of that so that at least I stick to my, to my sermon outline. And so God uh, calls Moses. Moses, of course, was born in Egypt and grew up in the hands of Pharaoh or in the house of Pharaoh, trained in every way, was a defender of Israel because when, the, when an Egyptian was fighting an Israelite, Moses stood up to fight the Egyptian. And also when the Israelites were fighting, he was there to ask them, your brothers, why are you doing this? And they decided to kill him. And so Moses flew away and went to a different place. He went to Midian, but the Lord called him again and told him, you have to go to the land of Egypt and get my people out. Amen. Amen. I thank God for what the, the worship team has sung. If the Lord has said something, it doesn't matter how difficult it seems. It doesn't matter what enemies you face. The word of God is sure. It is yea and amen. Numbers 23 says that God is not a man that he should lie. Neither is he a son of man that he should repent. Has he said it and won't he do it? Has he spoken and won't he make it good? And therefore, if the father has said to Abraham that I will call my people out of Egypt, I will call my son out of Egypt, it was going to happen. Pharaoh tried to compete with God, but who is God? He has no equal. He does not fear anything or anyone. He's not intimidated by the, 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 the people and the men of war, our weapons and everything that we have. His will is forever accomplished. And so God defeated Pharaoh and used Moses to help the people of God to leave Egypt and get to, to the land of promise, although himself he never made it there. And so Moses is the greatest leader that Israel has ever had. A man who could confront Pharaoh and ask him, you know, give me the people because these people must go to the other side and worship God. And even though uh, Pharaoh was, was working against Moses and really wanted to trouble the people of Israel, Moses never feared. He's that kind of a leader. You know, when God gets angry with Israelites and says that I will finish these people, Moses is that leader who made intercession. Thank you, Gio, for the message that you preached yesterday at Jumbi. I, I hope it was recorded. Those are kind of messages that we need to hear and hear and hear. You know, and so uh, Josh, uh, Moses is told that you will help these people to cross over and he's advancing to go to the land of promise. You know, he's telling the people, we must go and serve the Lord. In fact, I love one of the negotiations with Pharaoh. You know, he said, leave some people here. And he said, even a hoof, <laughs> even a hoof, we will not remain. For we don't know if we go to the other side what the Lord will require. And I want to tell you, GCI, we are not leaving even a hoof. For as long as you have signed up and you are a member of GCI, we are not leaving you behind. We are advancing for conquest with every one of us. Our wives and our children, our men and our slaves. We shall carry with them to the land of promise. And so Moses is advancing and is ready to take the people of God to that land. He is making intercession. For his people, he's pleading with God. In fact, at some point he told God, if you're going to kill these people, then remove my name from the book of life. Such kind of a leader. I don't know how many, I don't know whether I can tell him that concerning you, but we can learn from Moses. Telling the Lord, remove my name from the book of life for GCI. 
I need the grace that was upon Moses. And so he's that kind of a leader that they have never seen before. An intercessor for them. A, a, a person who hears God on their behalf. A person who takes their needs and presents them before God. A man who would talk with God face to face. Like a man who talks with a friend. That is the man. And so as we come to the book of Joshua, then we are, we are being introduced to a season that I can call a dark moment for Israel. You know, that leader that I've just described has died. And, you know, let me tell you something at this early point. The promises of God are not tied around a person. They are not tied around a leader. The promises of God are yea and amen, and they are forever settled in heaven. Even if a leader dies, the promise of God has to come to pass. The leaders are custodians of the things of God. And if they go, another custodian will come and continue with the work for as long as they are obedient. Let us look at this man called Joshua. Who was Joshua? Actually, his name means salvation. It's just the same name where we get Jesus, salvation. And most, I mean, Joshua, Joshua was not just a member of God's army. He was Moses' aide. He walked with Moses. When Moses is going up the hill, Joshua is there. And I, I, I was tempted to think, Gio, I, I know you are a scholar. I was tempted to think that this man must have been going to the mountain with Moses. He was. He was. Okay. And waiting at the hill. You see, I'm correct. Thank you. Let me tell you, Bishop has been my teacher. Many things that, were, especially when I was at KAG, many things that he taught on Sunday, when we go to the exam room, I would find them there. And I would say, I would walk with my pen and say, you do not know my bishop. He just said it on Sunday. <laughs> and, and, and therefore, let me tell you, church, we are privileged. I'm not saying this for anything. It, we are privileged. We are privileged to just hear the word of God. The word, the real meat of the word of God. And so... Moses is going up the mountain. The first time we hear about Joshua is in Exodus 24, 13. Uh, the media team will help me. And by the way, we have scholars up there. And, and, and they know where the scriptures are. Sometimes when we are struggling here, they have already found it. So Moses rose with his assistant, Joshua. Who? Joshua. And Moses went up into the mountain of God. He rose up with his assistant and went to the mountain of God. Which means Joshua was not the kind of a person who will agree to be left behind. He went with Moses and went to the mountain of God. And in Exodus 33, 11, if we can get there, Exodus 33, 11. Thus the Lord used to speak to Moses face to face as a man speaks to his friend. When Moses turned again into the camp, his assistant who? Joshua. Joshua. Joshua was wondering, where was Aaron? He was in the outer court. That's why I'm referring you to the message that was preached yesterday. You cannot remain the same. His assistant, Joshua, the son of Nun, a young man, the one he described here the other Sunday, would not depart from the tent. So even for Watson, it is not about carrying that Bible of the preacher. When the man of God is going up the mountain, you're supposed to go with him there. Praise the Lord. As young as you are, you are not supposed to de de depart from the tent. When he's hearing God, Watson must be there. Listening to what God is telling Gio. You get the point? 
And so Joshua never left the presence of, of Moses. And I tell you, if there's a man that God is going to promote, if there's a woman God is going to promote, is a woman and a man who stays close to where the things of God are, to a leader that is following God. Paul said, follow me as I follow Christ. So if you find a leader that is following God, follow behind. Because when their, their agenda is over and when their mission is over, it's very easy for you to take the mantle. Praise the name of the Lord. God will not just pick anybody in the congregation. He checks to see who has been with this man in the hard times and in the good times. Praise the Lord. Joshua was the man. And in Deuteronomy, I think chapter 11, verse 14. Let's check. Deuteronomy chapter four, uh, 11, is it 31. Deuteronomy 31, 14. Just check. 31, 31. So Moses continued to speak. 14. And the Lord said to Moses, Behold the days approach when you must die. Must die. Many of us are caught by death, uh, by surprise. We don't know when we are dying. In fact, we die still hopeful that the Lord will remember me and give me a second chance. But this is a guy, I haven't seen a guy like this one, who was told that you are going to die. God must have trusted this man. Behold the day's approach when you must die. Call who? Not Aaron, not the Levites. Call Joshua and present yourselves in the tent of meeting that I may commission who? Him. Him. And Moses and Joshua went and presented themselves in the tent of meeting. Praise the Lord. That's the guy we are talking about in Joshua chapter 7. And so even as we read from verse number 1 to verse number 6, I want us to go to chapter number 6 verse 27 because the, word, the first word in chapter 7 begins with but. And for all the English people you know that you cannot start a sentence with the word but. So what is there before but? So the Lord was with Joshua and his fame was in all the land. Good news. Remember, these people of Israel had seen God in River Jordan. They are, making, they are, they are, they are, they are advancing for conquest in the land of Canaan and they have found a, a river that was full. He, you know, the banks of that river were full. And it was during winter, it was the most difficult time for anybody to cross the river. But let me tell you, the agendas of God go beyond natural circumstances. There is nothing that can stop the agenda of God. And so God had a strategy at River Jordan. He told Joshua, let the priests go in fast carrying the ark. Let them step into the water and let the people start to cross over. And God made a way through Jordan, the most difficult time. And then when they went through Jordan, they saw the hand of God. By the way, at Jordan and at Jericho, Israel saw the powerful hand of God. But in the story that I have for us this morning, they saw their weaknesses. It's one thing to see the strength of the Lord. And it is another thing to see your own weakness. So in Jericho, in Jordan, they crossed over and then they come to another place and they find Jericho. A wall that, uh, from my investigation, I discovered it was 2.5 to 3 meters thick. Nothing could bring that wall down. It was another difficult situation. And it was so high that you can't even see what happens in Jericho City itself. But they stood there and God gave another strategy. He didn't tell the, 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 the priests 
to march around, I mean, to, to get in, in and, and, and blow the trumpets and all that. He told the people, walk around Jericho quietly. Let me tell you, our God has a strategy for every situation. My friends, there are times you need to walk around Jericho wall with your mouth shut. Because speaking too early can ab abort your miracle and the purposes of God. Thank you, Gio. There are things that you need to shout. There are other things you need to shut your mouth. Because God has a strategy for everything in our lives. So he tells them, go around Jericho six times. The seventh time, go around it seven times. How many times are these? 13 times. When I was in Sunday school, I knew that they went through Jericho. Thank you, Sunday school teachers, but investigate a little more. You know, I knew that they went around the walls of Jericho seven times. When I looked at it keenly, I discovered it was 13 times. Quiet. You think going around Jericho 13 times quiet is not a miracle? Try to be quiet in church. Until the service is over, and you will know how difficult it is. I checked how long was the circumference. I discovered it was about nine acres in Jericho. And they needed to go round Jericho, nine acres, 13 times, quiet. The strategies of God. And when they followed the strategies of God, they were successful and discovered the strength of the Lord. Praise the Lord. And so as we come to the, to the text of today, chapter number seven, we find another story. It's like, you know, from Joshua chapter one, we've climbed up. We are in the highest place. But in chapter number seven, we drop down. Seven and chapter 9, actually they came down. You know what happened? Joshua sent some two spies. And they went to the land of Ai. And when they went there, they came back to Joshua with a report. They said that the land is too small. Joshua, never mind. Th those guys are not. Actually, Ai was smaller than Jericho in terms of numbers. And so they are looking at it and they are saying, this is a done deal. There are many times we feel like that, isn't it? And so they said, don't even bother the people of Israel. Just get yourself 2,000 to 3,000 people and send them to Jericho, I mean to Ai, and they will bring the city down. Did you hear them mentioning God? No. When they went to spy the land of Canaan, Caleb and Joshua stood and said, God is able to put these men into our hands. But at I, the two spies went and said, the land is too small. So get just a few thousands of people and we shall bring it down. Never rely on your own strength. As we advance for conquest, it is not our strength that we are using. It is not our expertise that we are using. It is not the level of education that we have. It is by the Spirit of God. It is not by power. It is not by might. It's not by wisdom and strength. It is by the Spirit of the living God. And church, if we are going to advance and conquer the land before us, we must rely upon the strength of the Lord. By the way, did I give you the title of my message? Oh, thank you. Thank you. So, we are advancing with God's instructions. That's point number one that I see in this conquest. And so, in the beginning, God told Joshua that you shall meditate, be strong and courageous. You know, and then he says to him again, be careful to observe all the law that I gave my servant Moses. You must keep these words in the lips, in your lips, and then meditate upon them day and night, and you shall have good success, and you shall be prosperous. 
the instructions are very clear. That you don't need to carry your Bible and put it under your pillow. You need to take that word to heart and speak it. You know, you can't speak about something that you don't know. When I was learning English, I had to practice quietly. It's like going the walls of Jericho. Because you don't know how you're going to pronounce it, how you're going to use it. You, you practice in your closet quietly. But if you hear me pronouncing a word in English, <laughs> you know some of us who are not born in Nairobi. <laughs> me, my first language is Kamba, and, and you can't defeat me in it. But English has been a problem for me for many years. But you know what? God is telling these people, you must, he's telling Joshua specifically, meditate upon this day and night and keep the law in your lips, which means by the time Joshua is speaking the law, he has taken time in his closet to study it, to learn how to use it. And now he's proud to speak the word of God. Praise the Lord. And so God is speaking to Joshua, he's speaking to Israel and he's telling them that my instructions must remain with you everywhere you go so that you have good success and prosperity. Praise the Lord. Advancing with God's instructions. If you're going to leave the instructions of God behind, I tell you, you are not advancing to anywhere. You will face issues along your way. You will be defeated by the enemy. By the way, the Lord honors his word and he demands obedience. Amen. Amen. And the second thing I see is that you need to listen while advancing. You have to keep your ears open to God. Because in Jordan, there's an instruction on how to cross over. In Jericho, there's an instruction on how to cross over. In the Red Sea, there was an instruction on how to cross over. In the wilderness, God was giving instructions. And let me tell you, God does not necessarily need to perform a miracle in a certain way. Many times, even today, God can decide that somebody is going to be healed by laying on of hands. But in another situation, like I used an example in the, second, in the first service, God can decide even to, make, to spit on the ground, make some mud, apply them on your eyes. And because your instruction is that do not lean on your own understanding, can you imagine when a man is spitting down and making mud out of that sputum and then applying that thing on you? We know that it is a, it's, it's not healthy. It's yuck. But I tell you, your healing is in the yuck things of God. It is in the yuck things of God because many times when we rely on our own understanding, we never get to the place where the Lord wants us to be. You have to keep your ears open to the word of God because God has given an instruction and he has moved on. It will take a man and a woman who is following him to know what you're supposed to do about your situation. Praise the Lord. So in chapter number seven, God is tell, had already told Israel, when you go there, destroy everything that you find. Ears on the word of God. You must hear him. And so Achan, one of the guys who are used to the things of God, decided, ah, God is far away in heaven. I can have these things to myself. And he hid them. And I tell you, that was the beginning of the fall of Israel. That's why when they trusted God, they saw the strength of God. When they trusted in themselves, they saw their own weakness. And so Achan hides these things that are devoted to the Lord. And let me tell you, church, there are things that are devoted to God that you're not supposed to touch. When God has not said that they belong to, them, to, to him, there's no problem. But when he says they belong to him, 
Even if they're in your hands, my friends, it becomes a curse for you. One of those things is tithing. He has said all the tithes belong to who? So when you touch it, it's like asking for a curse. I know the theologians who are watching me, we say, I am, me, I'm not a theologian. I am a student of the word. But many times I've heard that tithing is in the Old Testament, in the Old Covenant, and we are in the New Covenant. But I tell you, I am right in the New Covenant. And I have never suffered any pain for tithing. I have never suffered. In fact, I have suffered when I have refused to tithe. Sometimes the bills are too many, and you tell yourself even God understands. You see, there's a scripture that says God understands. Yeah. Because what are we supposed to speak? The word. So when you say that God understands, you're making it to be scriptural. The word of God. He has said, <laughs> and I thank God because the Bible is a closed canon. You cannot write anything and add it there. And God was very wise. Because today, Pastor Alan, we would have written this Bible. It was, if it was left open, even me, there's something I wanted to put there. But it is a closed canon. We can't add anything. So he has said that the devoted things belong to him. And therefore, if you take it, you're pronouncing a curse upon yourself. So Akan gets that thing and hides it. And Israel, God is watching them. And they are now advancing for conquest in Ai. When, they, when uh, Joshua and his team of 3,000 men arrived at Ai, you know, they looked at it like a small nation, way smaller than Jericho. They felt we have strength to overcome this one. And I tell you, they were beaten. 36 men were put down. And they ran, went into hiding. And Joshua, like you and myself, knelt before the Lord, began to cry and accuse God. Now, God, what is going to happen? If these people are going to be killed, what happens to your name? Like it was God's problem. It wasn't God's problem. It was Akan's problem. Right. And I want to tell you, GCI members, those of us who are hiding things, hiding sin in our lives, you are making us not to advance for conquest. You know, because of one man, 36 men died. Israel got defeated. It is the high time that the Lord is telling us that even as we advance for conquest, we must drop down sin. Those sins that we are doing in the hidden places and covering, dusting ourselves and covering ourselves and appearing before God. Yesterday, Gio told us that a man or a woman can go and fornicate the whole week, even the previous night, and stand on the pulpit and preach like me. You are still in the outer court. That message was so powerful. Because there are things that happen in Chumbi that are not happening in Central. When the Geo is going up the mountain, let's go with him. Because there's a word for each one of us. When he's in the tent, go with him. And if you didn't go, he has provided the YouTube channel. You can follow that and hear that message. And so these people hid because, I mean, I can hid because he was still in the outer court and hid the sin and it was destroying the whole army. One man leading to the destruction. I want to ask if you belong to this church, you must repent and remove those sins that you're hiding because you're causing us not to conquer as we want to conquer. By the time we stand here, in December, we are supposed, in fact, I think we will create more room right. for testimonies That's right. That's right. so that people can tell us how they conquered I, Jericho, Jordan, you know, the Jordans of our lives. I think we need to create room for that. Praise the name of the Lord. And so they went uh, and, and got beaten and Joshua lied down and cried to God and blamed God and God told them, get up. Get up, Joshua. What is it that you're saying? What is it that you're doing? 
Israel has sinned. And that's why you're getting defeated. And so, I want to say, put your ears in the word of God. Hear what the Lord is saying. Advancing for conquest in personal strength leads to defeat. I think you have already heard that because I have said it. If you're going to advance in your strength, you're going to be defeated. No wonder the proverb tells us that trust in the Lord with the whole of your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In everything, acknowledge him and he shall direct your paths. That is the word of God. And therefore, as you advance in your strength, you're going to be defeated. Uh, media give me Numbers 1330. Numbers 1330. Um, when, you are, when you advance in your own strength, in your own wisdom, in your own ideas, you shall be brought down. But Caleb quieted the people before Moses and said, let us go up at once. Go up, 28. I want 28 and 29. However, the people, of, uh, the people who dwell in the land are strong. And the cities are fortified and very large. And besides, we saw the descendants of Anak there. Uh -huh. The Amalekites dwell in the land of the Negev. And Hittites and Jebusites and the Amorites dwell in the hill country. And the Canaanites dwell by the sea and along the Jordan. And so they are giving a report of what they found in the land of promise. And you know, they are creating fear. Fear is when you see situations bigger than what they actually are. But faith is when you see situations that are, that, that, that are nothing. As you look it in the eyes of faith, that is faith. And so they saw the Anakims, they saw the giants, and they even said that we looked to them as grasshoppers. We felt like grasshoppers. But God was not asking for that. Neither was Moses asking for that. He was just asking, can you go and spy the land? How you felt was not part of the assignment. <laughs> was it an assignment? Your feelings are not part of advancing. How you see yourself is not part of advancing for conquest. Because let me tell you, even as I was coming to stand here, I was, still, I was feeling inferior. I was very fearful. You think preaching to the GO is, is an easy thing? And if you don't know, let me tell you because I've preached here, there's just a way he crosses his legs and looks at you. And then you start <laughs> investigating yourself on the pulpit. Did I say the right thing? <laughs> if you don't know, come and preach here and you will see. But I tell you, feelings are not part of advancing. Faith is part of advancing. And you say, let, 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 he will help me after I deliver. And, you know, they, 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 they looked like grasshoppers, but that was not an assignment for them. They needed to say how the land looks like. Praise the name of the Lord. Numbers 14, 1 to 4. Numbers 14, 1 to 4. Then all the congregation raised a loud cry. And the people wept that night. And all the people of Israel grumbled against Moses and Aaron. The whole congregation said to them, would, would that we had died in the land of Egypt? Or would that we had died in this wilderness? Why is the Lord bringing us into this land to fall by the sword? Our wives and our little ones will become a prey. Would it, be, would it not be better for us to go back to Egypt? And they said to one another, let us choose a leader and go back to Egypt. Uh, give me verse 5. Then Moses and Aaron on, uh, fell on their faces before all the assembly of the congregation of the people of Israel. Let me tell you something. I was looking at this scripture. Verse 3. Our wives and our little ones will become a prey. And I was asking myself, these were the 10 men who had gone spying. And they are giving a report and they are saying the way their wives are exposed. I want to ask us, 
in GCI. We need men of faith. Those kind of men in verse 3, giving a report from verse 1 to verse 4, are not part of the advancement. Praise the Lord. And let me tell you, Gio, if there is anything that the church needs, is men full of faith. Cowards, like the ones in other places, are not going to help us advance. Let me tell you, women know how to advance. <laughs> Did women complain? No. Did they say that we are praying, we and our children? No. Who was saying? Men. You men. Sisi to Nasonga Mbele, stop distracting the women. As we are following the voice of the Lord, as we are advancing for victory, we are advancing for conquest. So, men, if you are afraid, don't put us in your equation. It is you who are scared. As we are on the move, the children were moving, the women were moving, the men were afraid and blaming it on the women. But there were two men. Praise the Lord. There were two men that quieted that noise of the ten, that quieted the fearful men in the GCI of then, and said, no, 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 no. Can you imagine you giving a report until the Gio and his deputy fall down? Surely. We can't afford to do that. They fell down, and they were so afraid. Israel was afraid. But there was... There were two men in the congregation. Joseph is saying he's the one. And they stood up and said they quieted the people. And they said, no, we are well able. Because the Lord is going with us. He has given us victory. Has he said it and won't he do it? We need those men. We need those men in GCI who are not afraid and then speaking, our wives. Who said the wives are afraid? We are not. <laughs> our children, we are not. Sisi tunasonga kusonga. So men, you better tighten your belts and help us to conquer without confusing our bishop and our leaders. We are going and we must advance we are advancing in divine strength to conquer the land of promise. There was a lot of land that was left there. If you read Judges, you will see that they never conquered some place. And I want to ask us, let us conquer everything that is in the name of GCI. Everything that is in the name of Joyce. I must get it this year. Praise the name of the Lord. We are focusing on the land of promise. We are not going to look at ourselves. Well, church, we do not need to continue seeing ourselves as grasshoppers. We need to see ourselves as people who are strengthened by the Lord. And it doesn't matter how the city is. Maybe sometimes we know how to go to Cataloni, Heaven's Gate, and now GCI Prayer Center in Chumbi to pray for big problems. Let me tell you, there are only two reasons why people go to the prayer center. Either they know themselves and they know what belongs to them and they want to take it by force because the violent shall take it by force. And the other option that covers the majority is when you are scared. You are worried, you are carrying problems, you are miserable. Many times that person stays in the prayer center for 40 days and they come out, but they were so afraid. It's the reason why they went there. And very few, the bishop told me it's none, who will go to the prayer center to pray for a small problem. I don't know how many have gone to pray for a small problem. None. But I tell you, do not underestimate 
Because it is not based on our strength and our numbers. It is based on the promise of God. I was small, but it needed a strategy. And in chapter number 8, you will see, when God gave Joshua the strategy, they brought I down. I want to ask the church, as we advance for conquest, let us read chapter 1, chapter 2, chapter 3, chapter 4, chapter 5, chapter 6. And stay in that spirit. Don't rest in chapter 7 and chapter 9. In chapter 7, they underestimated. And they thought that their strength would give them eye. In chapter, number, uh, chapter 9, they were deceived by the Gibeonites. Let me tell you, after a big victory, you are supposed to pray like never before. Because after the victory, there comes something that brings you down to the lowest of the pit. That is what happened at I. And the Gibeonites, be careful about trivializing things. Depend on God and not on your own strength. And chapter 9, guard against deception. Men covered themselves with ashes and ragged clothes and pretended to be men from afar. And they signed a treaty with Joshua. And Israel again was defeated. But I tell you, when he picked it up in chapter number 10, that is the time we see the sun standing still. Let me tell you, if you have been in chapter 7 and chapter 9 of Joshua as a church, it is the time to begin again. Begin again. Rise up again. And begin to take God by his word. So that we can conquer for Christ. Praise the name of the Lord. If somebody can stop the sun, there's nothing that can stand in their way. So be careful after a big win, there can be a big fall. So let's stay with the word. Let the book of the law never depart from our lips. Let's rise up on our feet. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Father, we are here because you brought us indeed, just like your servant says, said to service us and to take away the things that we have hidden in our lives in terms of sin and even not trusting you, even not leaning on you, but leaning on our own understanding. Lord, we pray that you may forgive us and cleanse us from every sin so easily uh, entangles around our lives. Father, we pray that you set us free and every sinner that is in the house, I pray for freedom in the name of Jesus. Achan and Israel repented. Joshua repented on behalf of Achan and Israel. And Lord, you gave him victory in the north. And Lord, you gave him victory over I. I pray for a spirit of repentance to fill every heart and soul that is here this morning. Jehovah God, we need to advance and take the, the land that you have promised us. And Father, we pray that you help us. Help us, Lord. We want to depend on your strength and your power this wonderful day. Help us as GCI to realize that we cannot do anything without your power. We cannot rely on our own understanding. Father, help us to depend on you. We give you praise and we give you honor for this we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 God bless you.